More with Jeff Carlson on taking control of your digital photos. This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by the Mac Voices Slack, available to all patrons of Mac Voices. Sign up today at patreon.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, our conversation with Jeff Carlson continues about taking control of your digital photos and the latest edition of his book that lets you do just that. Jeff shares more tips and tricks and resources and workflows that can help you get more out of all the photos you've been taking. Let's go back and let Jeff do the talking. Jeff, in listening to you, I think that well, okay, I, w- I want to go to two places with this. First of all, I think we're all, we're, we're <laughs> say, all looking- Jeff, you are a really frustrated guy. That's what you're saying. <laughs> well, I th- aren't we all? Aren't we all? Um, yeah, exactly. No, I, I'm sorry I, to keep I, interrupting I, you. No, no, no. I, but I think, we, I think we are all looking for that single best solution to things. And I, I, what I'm taking away from you is, A, there's no single best solution no matter what your situation, and B- there are so many different situations and so many different variations on how you have dealt with your photos in the past and now you're de- trying to deal with them now that the best you can hope for is get something workable. And as we go along, when we get to the fourth and fifth edition of this book in a few years uh, or longer, that the options will be even better. But yeah. Ha- having said that, do you cover in the book um, – suggested workflows for I take a picture on my iPhone and now I want to get it into whatever my personal process is or the process that you have helped me design with your book and you know and and so I can actually make use of those photos yeah yeah in fact um, one of the first things I did when I when I was looking at how to update the book I realized that like it specifically needs a chapter just on workflows and so I, I wrote a, a new chapter that basically lays out, you know, here are so the common situations where, let's say, you know, you, you import into um, an application that's like Lightroom or Photos, and then here's how, you know, those then get edited and exported. Or maybe you import into something like uh, this program called Exposure X7, which doesn't store a catalog or a library in the same way that the others do. It's just looking at what's on your, your computer. Um, and so there's, there's you know, like that sort of workflow. Um, I made diagrams. It's all like super cool and colorful. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It, it's like, like workflow is, is a big deal. And um, actually, you know, from the beginning, the book starts not with any of this software. It starts with your camera and a handful of things that you can do before you shoot or as you're shooting that makes everything else a little bit easier from, you know, making sure that your clock is set to um, different options for recording location information, things like that. With the goal of having a workflow that is, that has as, as, the least amount of friction as possible as you're going through all these steps of getting ready to shoot, capturing your images, importing them, you know, reviewing them on your, on your software of choice, um, being able to sync them among different devices using a bunch of different online services until finally you have your, your, your final image um, edited and, there you go. And, and, and to be able to, you know, find all this stuff later. That's, I mean, that's great because that's what I guess all of a sudden workflows are becoming more and more important to all of us because we are trying to deal with all these projects and all this information that we're trying, that's coming at us. We're trying to figure out ways to organize it. Everything from your calendar to your photos to, your projects at work, if you work in an office or whatever. And and the workflow thing, I think, has become a bigger thing than it's ever been before. And I, photos is is just absolutely, photos as a, as a topic is ripe for this kind yeah. of thing. 
because you know you're i mean again you you might be taking something with a little point and shoot you might be taking it with your iphone you might be taking it with your big killer dslr um so i i i mean where do, i love the fact that you start with just make sure your your uh, your clock is set on your camera because yeah. <laughs> that that is that would be so easy to overlook and then you're really in trouble because then you have to go back and try to figure out even if you can't get the time at least the date and that's yeah. something that that our, all of our legacy photos just don't have. Yeah. I mean, you know, last year I took a trip to Europe and I realized on the second day that I had forgotten to update the the time zone in my cameras. And so there's a whole batch of photos that, you know, were apparently taken at like four o'clock in the morning um, <laughs> because... <laughs> you know, but like, like it still thought that it was in Seattle uh, when in fact I was seven or eight hours ahead. Um, fortunately, once you realize that it's a very easy fix, but you know, it took a little bit for me to, to realize like, like why, why is this showing up in the wrong order? Why, why are my iPhone photos from the same time showing up like at a completely different spot in my library? And it was like, Oh, because I'm an idiot who doesn't take his own advice and I forgot to change the time zone of my camera, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so we, we all do it. And rather than that being a sense of anxiety or, oh my gosh, I screwed up my photos and blah, blah, blah. I knew, all right, I can fix this super easy. I can just, you know, um, select the ones that, that were taken from this camera and I can, I know how I can easily find, you know, just the photos using that camera on this day, select them, make the time shift, and then be done, and I didn't have to stress about it later. Jeff, there's one more thing I want to touch on, and I don't know how deep you go into the book, but I'll, I'll go here anyway. I know, we all know you're a Lightroom guy. I mean, you've been on the show mm -hmm. talking about your Lightroom books and all. How do you feel like App Apple's native tools right now stack up now we've talked about some of the machine learning learning things and all that probably aren't quite there but for i'm going to call it the average the average person who takes a lot of photos yeah. family family photos and all with their with their iphone how does what apple gives us natively compare or the things that you think absolutely if, if you're that guy or girl lady woman whatever um <laughs> that you you know these are the services or these are the supplemental pieces of software that you really need to invest in to to maximize your photos yeah yeah okay so uh, i'll take this from from a uh, like two different angles um on the editing side no i'm going to back up first uh you have to remember <laughs> no there's too much let me sum up um <laughs> There is, <laughs> all right, you have to remember that Apple Photos is designed for literally millions and millions and millions of people to use. So it is not going to be super deep in a lot of its features because Apple doesn't want to confuse anyone. And as soon as somebody gets confused, then they get frustrated, and then maybe they, you know, they decide, wow, I'm not going to buy an iPhone anymore because this was really confusing. Um, also, because that software also has to work on all the millions of iPhones and iPads in terms of editing and organizing and all of that. Um, so you have to keep that in mind when I say that the editing tools in photos are perfectly fine. Um, there are things that, that Lightroom, that say, uh, Photomator, um, by the, by the Pixelmator team, things that, that other apps will do that go above and beyond. But for most people, photos will work just fine. Um, you will get, you know, good results. Um, if you have something that's, you know, like an image that was shot that's too dark, like you can bring up the tones and, and fix it. Um, so that's that's one side of it. The other side of it, which is more about what we're talking about here in regards to this book, is the organizational side. And what Photos has as its, I think, 
main selling point right now um, is the iCloud Photos ecosystem. So that you know that when you take a photo on your iPhone, when you capture it there, it'll show up on your iPhone, it'll be on your Mac in a couple of minutes, it'll be on your iPad in a couple of minutes. It just mostly, you know, big asterisk, it just mostly just works. Um, except when it doesn't, but that's I mean, that's the case with any any online syncing service. Um, and also, it, it, it's a consistent experience. What trips me up with, with uh, the Photos ecosystem is that you don't have a lot of options when it comes to keywording um, and, and rating. Um, let me take those in, in turn. You can do keywords, and actually, they've quote unquote, improve this in recent um, recent years because you can assign keywords. Um, but it is very much, I think, somebody had a task list at Apple. They were like, enough people are, are, are complaining about this. Let's just add some sort of basic functionality. Because what you have to do is, in photos on the Mac, you have to bring up your info panel and you have to type in your keywords. And it's an annoying, there's this really annoying bug where uh, you type a keyword, say winter, and then you you hit return. And then the, um, the, the what's the right word? The selection of that field goes away. So then if you want to type another keyword, you have to click on the field to activate it and type your next keyword and then click on the field and type your next keyword. It's a stupid bug. It's been there forever and it's it's super annoying and I think it keeps people from wanting to do this. Um, th there's also like a keywords panel that you have to have open if you want to do some shortcuts and I don't know. It's, it's, it's frustrating enough that I don't really keyword in photos because it drives me crazy. There are tools that will help you with this. Um, the um, I, I am forgetting what the name is off the top of my head, but um, uh, Howda, H O U D A H, they make uh, Howda Geo. Um, and in the last year, they came out with an application, and I am sorry that I can't remember it, um, that basically gives you a better interface for dealing with metadata in your photos library. Um, mm -hmm. So if this is something that you want to do, and you are in photos and, and you've chosen that as your ecosystem, which is fine. Um, this will greatly help you in, in, in that regard. Um, and, and then, as I mentioned before, the aspect of photos scanning your images and looking for objects and, and coming up with a lot of this AI-based recognition, uh, which is great, but you don't really know what you're going to get. Um, I would say if I'm doing just a regular search in photos, it'll come up, you know, 80, 70 to 80 percent of, of what I'm looking for will show up. But it might not be that particular image that I had in mind. So it's kind of a crapshoot and it's kind of just this locked box. Like it's it's neat and they're doing some interesting things. And for, again, most people. Most of the millions of people who are never going to even touch any of this, uh, it's fine. So that's largely why I prefer something that's you know, more like Lightroom, which has more roots in a user base that you know went crazy for keywording and um, you know. Uh, oh, also the the other thing that that uh, drives me slightly crazy about photos is rating. So. One of the big keys in the book is a chapter called uh, Judge Your Photos. And the, the the concept is you want to find your photos that are good so that you can then share them or edit them later. And in the photos ecosystem, um, unlike Aperture and iPhoto, they got rid of stars. And so you can either just favorite something or not favorite something. And for, to me, that's too binary, I like to be able to look through my images and say, all right, this is a two-star image, which is something that I'll look at again and might be worth uh, editing. Um, this is a three-star image that I know 
I really want to edit because I like how it turned out and I felt really good when I took it. And having more than just like, this is good, this is my favorite, or this may be not be my favorite, but I want to mark this so that I'll come back to it later. Well, I guess I'm going to have to mark it as a favorite, but it's not really a favorite. I just want to have it in front of me again. Like that binary nature just doesn't really work for me. Um, so I think, I think in terms of especially rating, um, you're going to get a lot more flexibility and a lot more, a lot more options using something else besides photos. But there are also some, some workarounds. You can, you, you can make keywords that are, that, that coincide with star ratings. And there's a section in the book about that. Um, but, you know, again, how much do you want to get into it? How deeply do you want to uh, mess with all this stuff? Have I answered your question or did I just ramble off the side of a cliff? <laughs> no, no, no. You, I think you hit it head on because this, okay. this reminds me of so many of the things we see with Apple. And, and this is both a strength and a weakness that they give you something that is good for 70, 80, 90, some, maybe 90% of the people that's good enough. Mm -hmm. But for those people that want that higher degree of control or that extra feature set, you need to look somewhere else. And I'm thinking, okay, it used to be that you could stay with Apple and go to Aperture, and you got a lot more of this robustness. Apple decided not to, to, to get out of that business, and that's fine. But, you know, like we have, um, we have iMovie, and we have, um, and we have Final Cut, and mm -hmm. so those are the two levels. Here, we don't have a second level. And so I yeah. kind of like that, that, you know, that there are these, there are so many great options. And if you really are into it, there are even better options. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I think you, I, I think you hit it. When you started out by saying Apple designed this for millions and millions of people to use, that right there says, if you're one of those millions, that's great. But if you don't think of yourself as one of those millions, you maybe need to look elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, I, this doesn't really come in, come up in the book because it's more of an editing thing, but um, I mentioned Photomator as an example. And what I like about Photomator is, I mean, it's, it's a photo editor and you get a lot of the controls similar to say Lightroom um, in that it is focused on what photographers need to do to an image, not necessarily like what somebody using Photoshop or Pixelmator Pro needs to do, which has a, a broader feature set. This is, you have your images, you need to control tone, you need to control color, um, you need to maybe do some um, denoising or there's a new feature that um, that does debanding. So if you have like a low resolution or highly compressed uh, sky, you know, it comes out in little stripes, you run this feature on it and it just makes it nice and smooth and pretty. Um, and so what's, what's cool about that is you have all of these, these editing tools that are going to be above and beyond what you'll find in Apple Photos, but the Photomator still uses the photos library as its management. So if you already have stuff in photos because you are syncing with iCloud photos or it's just been the default that you've been using, you still get to maintain that. And then Photomator just sort of jumps on top and says, great, you got your management figured out. Let's apply some more advanced editing features that you're not going to find in photos and still keep your library. And it's still the way the, the, the photos um, editing ecosystem works is you can apply edits in Photomator. It gets saved back to your photos library and you're not losing your original. You can always revert back to your original or you can reopen it in Photomator and, you know, move your sliders a little bit more. And so you kind of get the best of both worlds where you still have your photos library, which you may use as your, your library of choice, or just what you've used because you've not wanted to, you know, make a jump to Lightroom or another ecosystem or whatever, but you get the more advanced editing controls. 
Um, I know, um, you know, my, my podcast co-host, Kirk McLaren for our photoactive, um, podcast, he, um, he shoots with a, like a Q3, I think now. Um, but he's always been a photos guy. Um, and so he still just uses the photos library as his library and then uses Photomator to do all of his edits. So, you know, you don't have to think, oh, well, I have a nice camera or I have, a, you know, a, a mirrorless camera in addition to my iPhone. I guess that means that I have to do Lightroom or I have to do Capture One because it's, you know, quote, more professional. That's not necessarily the case if you already have a system that works. Jeff, we've hit a lot of stuff here. Um, <laughs> we always do. <laughs> well, yeah, we always do. And and I, I love it because take control of your digital photos sounds like it's such a simple thing. And it really – I guess it can be as simple as you want or as involved as you want. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day – we start. Well, we started out by saying, you know, that you you want to take more advantage of all these great photos that you have, and hopefully, folks have gotten some ideas here from this. But they're going to get even more ideas and more specifics in the book, um, and so that can be found, of course, at takecontrolbooks.com. Um, what's the pricing and upgrade situation on this, Jeff? Since it's the third edition and has been yeah, it's been nine, five years. No, five years. Not nah, whatever. Four years? More than that. Four years. Four years. I can't do math. Um, <laughs> since it's been updated. Uh, yeah, time doesn't make sense anymore. Um, nah. So it is, um, it, I'll, I will also say um, there are 20 new, and, you know, the, the book is 20 pages longer than it was, even taking out that whole big section. So there's, there's a lot of new stuff. There's stuff we didn't, we didn't cover. Um, it is fourteen uh, ninety nine. dollars to buy the book outright. If you own a previous edition of the book, it's just $5 to upgrade. And um, if if you own an earlier edition, uh, I believe the way to do it is um, it, go to takecontrolbooks.com, sign into your account, and I think the, the upgrade pricing is there. Um, or you, you may have uh, already gotten an email about, about upgrading to it. But yeah, 15 bucks, that's, that's not much. <laughs> Well, it's it's not much, and especially for something as important as your photos. If you if you have the interest in, in taking Jeff's advice and getting more yeah. out of them, um, because I know I'm guilty of that too. I, I I take photos. I go on a trip, or I'm in a situation. It's like that'd be great to print, or that'd be great to you know do something with, and then you never get around to it because yeah. it either slips your mind or you, you can't find the photo. I'm yeah. not admitting to that. Yeah. I'm just saying that it, it can happen. <laughs> <laughs> it it can theoretically happen. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, we went, like I said, we went to Europe last year, um, and my wife has still not reviewed all the photos that she took, and she was just taking pictures with her <laughs> with her iPhone. Um, and you know, it, it's it's not it's not even anything that gets in the way. It's just you get busy doing other things. And, you know, time passes, then you go on another vacation. So um, one of the things that, that, that I, maybe the, the last thing that I'll, that I'll leave you with about this book that I, I like about this book is that, yes, there are lots of different options and, and there are workflows and, and all of that. Um, but there are also um, some sections and sidebars that are basically, the, it, it's called the harried photographer, meaning if you are in a hurry, you don't want to do all of this stuff. Here are some concrete suggestions for still getting some some keywords going, getting some organization going without having to do everything. Because you can always go back and be more thoughtful, take spend more time, be more detail oriented about how you're going to organize things. But sometimes, you know, you've just been shooting a bunch. And you know you need to do something with your photos, but it's 11 o'clock at night and you have to get up early because you're going to go do some more vacation stuff. Here are some things to do to just give you that, that baseline to make those shots that you just took today easier to find and easier to edit later. That's a reason enough right there to buy the book. No question. There you go. <laughs> 
Jeff, as always, thank you so much for the time and all the wisdom. Um, but I want to make sure that folks know where else you're so busy doing all these other things that you're doing, because I know there are one or two. Yeah, yeah. Um, being busy is a good thing. Um, so uh, you can find all all things about me at jeffcarlson.com. That's probably the the, the easiest uh, easiest portal, I guess. Um, we talked about this recently. I've just released a brand new book, which actually, um, the timing of this, as we record this, um, there may be a box on my porch right now that includes my author copies of my new book from Rocky Nook, which is the Adobe Lightroom Course and Compendium, and uh, which means that that the print book is now shipping and now available. When we talked before, it was only the ebook because it was in the process of being uh, distributed and you know sent from warehouses and things. So uh, it the the print book is now out, which is great because it is a gorgeously printed, full color, you know, beautiful as you would expect a photo book to be. Um, so, so there's that, um, that's kind of like my, my other big project. Um, but I also recently released, um, as we've talked about, like take control of managing your files, take control of your, uh, digital storage. I'm currently working on take control of your Apple watch. That's going to cover, um, what is changing in the new watch OS and what we will find out soon enough. Um, depending on when this airs uh, at Apple's event, if they're going to announce a new watch. Um, and besides that, I've also been writing for DP Review and uh, Creative Pro and all sorts of different places. So um, that's a very long way of saying, go to jeffcarlson.com. You'll find out some cool things. Oh, and sorry, one last thing. Um, I also have my my photo AI newsletter, uh, photo-ai.com, um, which is just a, uh, a subscription newsletter about how AI is changing photography in fundamental ways. So, you know, I, I'm not doing much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just 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 the normal stuff. Yeah, go go and put your feet up on that box of books that's on your porch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jeff, thanks again. Um, I have a funny feeling we'll be talking about the Apple Watch books sooner rather than later. Ooh, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. So, folks, you, Jeff will be back. Um, this is Mac Voices. Uh, Thank you, Jeff Carlson, for everything. Um, so much information, and you've given me a bunch of homework because now I got to go and look up all these tools that you've talked about and decide <laughs> which ones are for, for me. Um, as always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page, and get more out of your Apple Tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.